When I watched Armitage 3, there was this moment where all of anime kind of made sense. Our investigator waltzed into the main office of the head of robotics to ask him about a case. When pressed for information about the humanoid Type 3 robots, the head of the company told his subservient cybernoid to take a knee for him to sit on. He then goes on a rant about the importance of upholding robotics as a field for idealized and fantastical machines that serve man's most idyllic desires. What was fascinating to me about this scene was how it used the robot as a substitute for the typical anime girl. She's upbeat, kawaii, and everything she says simultaneously has a saccharine and sexual tinge. In this anime's world, they portray typical anime characters as being lifeless hunks of metal. Anime has a tendency of commenting on itself in this way. As anime has grown as a medium, its audience has only become more niche. You'll find a litany of references, callbacks, and commentaries all being levied upon the most and least influential shows of our time. If it was even remotely prevalent within the medium, they have a way of shoehorning in a snide or meta remark about it, whether it be comedic or commentative like that scene from Armitage. This indulgence in what makes anime unique is implicative of a greater movement the medium embodies. When I got onto the internet, seeing people discuss anime was unlike any other community I had observed. Reaction images were almost a social currency, and the amount of shows you saw certainly added to your credibility in the discussion. But this wasn't merely a contest of dick measuring, it was a testament to dedication. Because anime is so large, it lends itself to being indulged in fully, for people to dedicate large sums of their life to this medium. And for someone who cares deeply enough about one thing, it can be immensely appealing to see the threads of that thing being sewed all throughout its contemporaries. Anime in this context becomes a language of its own. After after immersing oneself into so much of it, we begin to understand more and more of the underpinnings of that language, thereby leading to commentary we see in a series like Haruvi. Anime appeals to people because it's specific. Because anime operates on a system mostly of loss in terms of finance, a lot of creators can go ham in terms of releasing the most whack shit out there. They exist because a small number of fans buy a lot, and if they don't, anime still exists. It's refreshing to see a medium about what fans of the medium want from it, so much so that that culture of specificity is prevalent among most of its works. And even without this referential culture built on communally partaking in our journey through it, anime is so vast and varied that one can become lost in single genres. No other medium allows for 200 episode shows about the life and drama of one boxer, spending over 10 of those in prison while in the exact same medium sporting 50 episode long shows shows of cute characters having conversations typical to daily life, and then having other shows taking the best of these stories to tell a two-episode sci-fi story about the daily life of an android in the apocalypse. At the end of the day, I watch anime because anime is anime, and you're not going to find anything else that leaves even a semblance of its footprint. The medium has provided hundreds of hours of entertainment as well as contemplation to me. Cheers to the next hunt.